Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, the basics of EQ using PreSonus Studio One's channel strip. This video is going to be great for our Prime users too, because the channel strip is included with Prime. Today, we're only going to be talking about the EQ section on the right hand side over here. This is what's known as a three band EQ. The low is what's called a shelving EQ, and so is the high. The mid is known as a parametric EQ. So what is the difference between a parametric EQ and a shelving EQ? Let's zoom in and take a look. For any type of shelving EQ, whether it be a high or low, essentially what happens when I boost the high end, it will create a slow ramp up of all the frequencies above our target frequency, but it will also slowly ramp up frequencies below our target. It will do the same thing if we cut these frequencies. We can adjust the frequency with this control here so that our shelve begins earlier and affects more frequencies below it. Let's go really extreme so you can see what I'm talking about. This is a better way to show you because now our target frequency is 2.5K, but we can see that 2K, 1.5, and all the way down to 1K are being affected as well, but not nearly as much as 5, 6, 7, so on and so forth. This is what a shelving EQ does. Everything above your target frequency or below, if you're on a low band, is affected by the shelve. I'm going to put this back to normal. And we can see that the low does the same thing. You may have seen that as I boost and cut the low and the high shelves, that the shape changes. That's because of the adaptive cue. And we'll get into what this actually does in a little bit. Let's set everything back to zero. Now let's talk about parametric EQs and the mid band right here. I'm gonna put this at 1K. So we can really see what's going on. A parametric EQ has more of a bell shape like this. This bell shape is centered around our target EQ specified here. We can grab this and move this bell all the way around. And you can see that frequencies above and below our target are affected by this type of EQ. The same is true whether you do a boost or a cut. We put this back to zero and let's talk about the adaptive Q option down here. What this will do when we hover over it tells us that it will adjust the filter Q with gain. But what does that mean? On our mid band, the more we boost or cut frequencies, it will adaptively change the shape of the EQ. And you can see the harder I push, the more narrow it gets. This is called an EQ's bandwidth. The harder I boost or cut a frequency with the adaptive Q on, the more narrow the EQ will become. If we turn it off, you can see that it's a much wider bell and will affect more frequencies around your target. Let's put this back to default. For those that don't know, to get something back to default, you can command click on Mac or control click on PC and it will reset to zero. On the channel strip, in the EQ section, you'll also see this gain knob here. But this gain knob isn't for just the EQ section. It's for the entire channel strip. If you do a lot of corrective moves on the channel strip and lose some of the punch or volume from that instrument, you can make it up with the gain knob here. Or if you add too much, you can pull it back. The auto button will correct the gain based on your moves in both the dynamic section and the EQ section. These are the very basics of the EQ on the PreSonus channel strip. But you may have noticed on the left hand side, there is a frequency selector all the way over here. This is for your low cut frequency. This works in a different way than the low bands on our EQ over here. This is strictly a low cut. If we engage, we can see a new band has popped up on our display and we can adjust the frequency from here, but you can see what it's doing. 
it's taking our target frequency and reducing all of the frequencies below it. This is used for getting rid of unwanted frequencies in the low end and help clear up some of the rumble. You have to be careful. If you start going up too high, you'll start losing some of the body of those instruments. Using the low cut in conjunction with the EQ, you can really shape the sound of your instrument and get it sitting perfectly in your mix. If you step up to Studio One Pro or Artist with the VST add-on, you can start using third-party plugins as well and using their EQs in a similar way. The terminology and functionality is common across every EQ. It's just how that EQ affects the sound and sounds itself. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share this video. If you have a question, please leave a comment and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.